Hello and welcome to part 4 of Getting Good at Godot, the most underrated Godot tutorial on the internet. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain how to add some input handling to your game. I think it's fairly safe to say that a lot of you are going to want to know about this. So, Godot has a few options for handling input. By far the easiest to use is the built-in input mapping, which we can access by going here, Scene, Project Settings, uh, and there's a lot of options here which we could modify, but we're we'll focused on the input map tab. So here you see there's a lot of headings and underneath respective keys uh, associated with the headings. These headings are called actions. Uh, so you can see UI accept is an action and that's bound to either the return key, the enter key or the spacebar key or um, the controller keys. So let's let's for now let's make our own action. I'm going to make one called move right. So up here in the top text field, I'm going to type move right, and then select the add button, or press enter. Now I'm actually going to do this for move left, move up, and move down. And we have four new actions. Could rename them, but I don't want to. So I'm going to add a key. So we can press this plus button next to the heading. You can see it's also on all these other headings. And I'll set key. And since it's right, I'll press the D key. And I'll continue doing this uh, to make a standard uh, WASD control scheme. Just like that. There we go. So if I really wanted to, I could bind the arrow keys as well. If I wanted to do move right, I could do key, right arrow key, left Okay, which I'm apparently just doing because I started explaining how I wasn't going to because I can't be bothered, but I'd ended up doing it anyway. So uh, consider that my gift to you. Um, so once we've done this, we can close the editor. We can press the script icon here to return to the player.gd script. Uh, so currently, it just moves to the right automatically. However, we want the sprite to only move when a key is being pressed. Fortunately, Godot does have a, a very easy um, way of telling when a key is being pressed. We can use the we can use the function input is action pressed action, which returns a boolean value as to whether the action specified is being pressed. Um, so I'll just show you exactly what we got to do. So we got to do if input dot is action pressed. Uh, let's do move right. And then we can indent this, since it's part of this statement. And now this will only run um, if input, uh, or if move right is being pressed down. So that means either the right arrow key or the D key, as we bound back in project settings. So let's, uh, let's press play and let's see if this works. It does. It works very well. We can't, we don't have any other directions, but we can move to the right, which is, which is fine. So, it's pretty simple to expand this to all the other um, potential directions. I'll just do it here. Uh, Position.x minus equals 1. If input is action, uh, move down, sure. Current position. .y. Lf input dot is action pressed. Move up, and we're almost done. I let's see the one. So this will just change the coordinates uh, depending on what key is being pressed, um, and then it updates the position. Okay, so this is fine. Let's launch the project. It works. Hooray! Okay. Truly, this is an award-winning user experience. However, we're not done yet. Uh, there is another way to handle input in Godot uh, using event-based programming. Uh, what this means is that instead of constantly checking uh, whether a, an action is being pressed, it will run a piece of code when an action is pressed. Um, I'll, I'll go through an example to help you try and get what's going on here. Um, for the record, this is called the polling method because it's constantly uh, polling or checking to see if an action is being pressed. So let's let's go up here. Let's do set process oops input. 
All right. So this will start to, as it sounds, will process our input. So we can define a function called, uh, not in it, input event. There we go. So now, uh, whenever there is an input happening, it'll run this and it'll pass the argument event. Now, event is um, an, an object of type input event, uh, which I actually have the documentation for right here. It's input event, and it has all these um, variables in it, numerical constants, and functions. Pretty good stuff. Okay, let's let's move that out of the way for now. Um, so we could do print event here, and we should be able to see that any time we do anything, it prints out a little thing to the screen, including motion events. So when I move the mouse inside the th inside the uh, window, if I was pressing a key, you can see event key. If I was doing the arrow key. Or if I was going to click, right click, yeah. So it's basically everything that happens. So we don't uh, want to run it for everything that happens. What we're going to do at this point, we, we're going to implement uh, functionality for our, our Godot mascot to teleport wherever we click the mouse button. Uh, this isn't as bad as it sounds. Let's, let's start, let's start. So um, first we're going to check that the event really is a mouse click. This isn't too hard. Um, but I would have some documentation ready because some of these identifiers aren't particularly intuitive. Let's do if event.type is equal to uh, input event uh, dot mouse button. Let's do print click. Okay. Oops. Uh, okay, so uh, you might be able to see event.type. So our event is an object of type input event, and it has this member variable called type. And type is an integer, which I shouldn't have clicked. Type is an integer, which tells us the type of event that it is. So it's one of these, uh, one of these constants below. It is, in fact, this constant that we that we want. Theoretically, we could write if, you know, that's equal to input event, or if event type is equal to three. However, that's a bit confusing. And it, there is very minimal, well, realistically, there is no performance overhead by calling input event dot mouse button. Um, it's, um, yeah, it makes it a bit easier to, easier to see. So let's run this, and um, yes, yeah, so we can see pressing buttons does nothing, moving the mouse does nothing. Uh, let's click, and it works. We get a click every time. That's That's good. That's exactly or more or less what we want. However, you might have noticed when we click when we click it does a click for pressing the mouse and a press uh, a click for pressing the mouse and a click for releasing the mouse. And this isn't quite right. We only want um to register uh this click when the mouse is being pressed down. So we can go here and we can just very simple do and event dot is pressed. That's it. Now hopefully, if I have not messed this up, there we go. So when we release it, you can, uh, can't really move this out of the way, but uh, when we release the mouse button, event dot is pressed as false, so the whole condition isn't true. Um, so there we go, that works, that works, that's good. Uh, one more thing is that if we right click, it also um, sends the click signal, and we don't want to do anything when we right click. And here's where I need to come clean. I have lied a little bit uh, about the nature of input event. I told you that event was of type input event, and it sort of is, but more specifically, it's going to be of type input event mouse button if it's a mouse click. If it's a key press, it's going to be of type input event key. And these have all these other member variables associated with them. Um, but mouse is what you're looking at. So you can see mouse has button index, uh, which is what we want to look at here because the button index tells us which button on the mouse is being pressed. There's also some other stuff like position, which we'll get to in a moment. So with that in mind, let's move this off. 
uh, with that in mind, we need to get the uh, event or the input event mouse buttons uh, button index and then compare it with another constant. And now the constants are all here. And there's a lot of them. And you don't have to know most of them. I'm just going to, oops, I'm just going to do control F button and there we go. Um, so button left is one. So because this is actually in global scope, we don't have to call it as a member variable of anything. Uh, we can just do, well, first of all, let's put this down and indent it. If event dot button index or button index is equal to button left, and that's it. Uh, we can't actually do, you know, uh, and event dot button index because that could throw an exception considering we don't know at this at this stage uh, whether or not um, event has the member variable button index because remember if it's a if it's type key if, uh, input event key there is no button index here so it'll say wait uh, it'll freak out don't want it so we only want to even make this check if it is already of type mouse button so now let's try it right clicking does nothing left clicking does exactly what we want and uh, yeah so we're almost done now uh, if we go back to input event mouse button here you can see we can actually get the position of the of the mouse click by um, just calling uh, event dot pause and that's it so we could do something very simple like set pause of event dot pause and I keep hitting this microphone. It's not a microphone, it's a, f it's a mobile phone which I'm just recording from. It's very unwieldy. Um, but mild dissatisfaction with my recording setup aside, this should set our position to the position at which the event took place. So let's play the scene. It works. Hooray. We can move at the same time. It's uh, it's quite exciting. It's quite exciting. Now, I understand if this wasn't very clear, I would recommend you rewatch this or maybe try it yourself or something because this was a bit confusing going through um, different types of input event. It was a bit steep, um, and honestly, you probably wouldn't have to do input uh, or event-based um, input very often, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, you could stick to the polling method in process uh, very, very comfortably. So, I, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, stay tuned for part five. I'll be covering a slightly less grisly topic, which will be collision detection and physics bodies. Enjoy.